I am with Ethan Foreman from the Gloucester Daily Times again this week. Uh, how are you doing, Ethan? I'm doing pretty good. It's a Jewish New Year and uh, celebrating. So thanks very much. It's, we, uh, yeah. you, you just taught me this, Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Yeah, yeah. Have so, a sweet year. It's, you know, all New Year should be in September. It's true. Right? It feels like <laughs> it's the right month for a new year. Yeah. So, um, well, I, I wish your, hap your family the best. Thank you. So let's talk about a really, start with a really happy subject, school names. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a big, there's a big old school uh, rising on, uh, on Webster Street. And what do we call it? Right. It goes by this kind of moniker, e eggs, almost like East Cons Gloucester Veterans Memorial. Or consolidated slash, school. Consolidated. Yeah. Combined, <laughs> if they're confined, look. Gloucester has crazy. two two uh, two schools that needed to create one uh, larger one, 440 students, and it's uh, st that building is, is coming together on Webster Street, uh, not far from the extension. And what so what do we what do we call it? You know, it's two. The whole idea of this process that's been going on really since the winter is to find a name that brings together two school communities. So often when a church, two churches come together, they'll pick a new name. So I, maybe the convenient thing to do would have been to just put the two names together, but they decided to have a process. They decided they didn't want to name it after a person. Um, and why is that? I think, well, I, there has been some controversy over, you know, the school is built on Meadows Field and uh, you know that uh, that uh, uh, legal process is still ongoing, actually. Mm. Uh, where the neighbors objected to them using uh, you know parkland essentially. So that I think the idea was that you don't if you name it after somebody, it 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 kind of creates ownership. I mean, I don't think you know I'm not belittling or anything what the neighbors are are trying to do. Um, they have a strong connection to uh, Meadows. And uh, and their efforts in the field, but you know, let's name it after something new. Mm. Let's bring in. Let's not have it named after anybody. Um, there's only a couple of schools that are named in um, Gloucester after somebody, O'Malley and Beeman. So let's name it something else. So they brought in the community, and uh, they've had this nominations committee, and they put students on it. It wasn't adults. It was student driven. They had a, you know, they had uh, the principals of the schools, East Gloucester and veterans, Matt Fusco and Amy Pascarello. And uh, so they've had this process. Uh, the, they've been solicited input from the community. They got about 71, 71 nominations, 51, I think about that, uh, were, uh, ori you know, original and they whittled them down to 10. And on uh, Wednesday night, the school committee met with the nominations committee with students from the East Gloucester and Veterans Memorial School, students who are who went to those schools at O'Malley and at Gloucester High. So they had some alumni, recent alumni. And uh, the kids went through all the responses. They had hundreds of responses to the 10 names that they picked. And they looked at how, whether they were positive, negative, and they went through them and they came out with this process with these four names. Four. You gonna ask me? Yeah, I, I drum roll. <laughs> That's what it was like watching the school committee. <laughs> oh, I bet. No, wait. Before you say the names, I think you mentioned in the article that uh, there were comments about that you that they were um, the nominations committee was reporting on some of the comments on the names. Yeah, so they read can... and they read out, and I, I don't have any of them in front of me, but they were just reading out uh, generally positive comments about the names. But not, you don't remember things specifically about specific names. You know, they were, if they were, the themes were like, you know, the Fisherman's Memorial, you know, I have to name okay. the names. The names are. Okay, the names are. Possible names are Seaside Elementary School, Seaside Elementary School, uh, First Light Elementary School, Fisherman's Memorial Elementary School, and East Veterans Elementary School. So I didn't include this in my story, but the, they did have the kids read out comments from the community. Yeah, so what so, are the comments? What are some well, of the veterans, you know, obviously to keep the veterans uh, name on a school in in uh, in Gloucester. Mm -hmm. Now two schools are named after veterans already, Beeman and O'Malley. 
but they wanted to keep the veteran's name on it. Uh, P- Fisherman's Memorial, obviously, Gloucester is, a, is the, uh, the fisherman. No, wait, right? can we get back to the veterans? So is the East part simply to refer to East Gloucester? In East veterans? You know, I don't know. I, the, the comments weren't centered on East so much as, I mean, obviously it's a combination of both names. Okay. And it got, it got, must have got a lot of community support. Okay. Yeah, you know, those are, those are the popular, popular names, uh, I, you know, I think. But the committee didn't really t- t- say which one that they preferred. Okay, so wait a minute. Let's go through them. I interrupted you because I was stuck on the East Veterans. So, um, so we have East Veterans, and then we have Fisherman's Memorial. Fisherman's Memorial. My favorite. Sure. My yeah, favorite. That's, that's your, I'm not going to say what <laughs> I like. Uh, f- uh, First Light Elementary, obviously. That's nice too. I like uh, it. Yeah. You know, now I don't think Gloucester is quite the first light of the sun coming. I think that might be up in Nova Scotia somewhere. But anyway, uh, for North America, uh, but you know, look, it's great. And uh, it's original and Seaside Elementary. So, so sort of. Um, Seaside Elementary sounds like a resort. And, there's, and there, people are telling me there, you know, uh, there is a seaside cemetery in Lanesville. Yes, that, right, right up the street from me. Right, exactly. So, hmm. I I wish the school committee they're going to be school committee is going to be uh, holding a public hearing, mm-hmm. so the public will get to weigh in on these names, you know, in public. Okay, and when is that? That's October twelfth. Okay. All right, so we and, have the public hearing. We have the four names now. And they've been nominated by this wonderful group of students from all yeah. across the city. And now there's a public hearing. Well, no, the students are from the school. They weren't from across the city. They, these were oh, I thought students. there were high school students and middle school students. But they attended the school. Oh, they'd all. They're, They're alumni. I see. Oh, okay. So it wasn't like they didn't say, hey, you know, name this. It's like they had to have attended. Uh, so the one kids, of the two kids at the middle school and the high school. Yeah. And they, you know, they solicited, look, the kids did a, uh, a great job. They solicited the opinions of, of the veterans uh, agent. They uh, reached out to alumni. I mean, there was a lot of, uh, there were a lot of uh, points at which people could uh, provide input. Oh, that's great. That's great. So now we have the four names and the public hearing is October 12th. And then what happens? Then the school, after that, the school committee will vote on the 26th. Now the okay. school committee, they are the ones who decide. Right. They, under policy and, you know, the school committee really owns the buildings, so it's their buildings. But it will be interesting to uh, see how, or uh, to view how much they are paying attention to the public comments on the 12th. I'm sure and that I, will be important to them. And then on Twitter, I also put up a poll. Oh. Uh, a how Twitter poll. Huh? How did I miss that? I love your your Twitter feed, Ethan. My Twitter, well, I don't do as much tweeting as I, uh, I as I normally do, but uh, it's at Foreman News, at Foreman News, which is really it's good. Know, it's good. Pretentious. It's good Let's just say no, no. <laughs> at Foreman News. It, it's it's informative though your Twitter. Uh, it is. <laughs> anyway, so there's a poll. Okay. And uh, I, uh, so right now, well, should I say what my poll is saying? Yeah, yeah. So the poll is up for like uh, six more days. There's been 36 votes. Mm-hmm. And so far, Seaside Elementary is leading at 38.9%, followed by Fisherman's Memorial at 36.1%. Oh. Uh, First Light is uh, 13.9%, and East Veterans Elementary at 11.1% there have been all of 36 votes. So it's a very small, I would read nothing into that. Yeah, we could probably sort of um, sort of take away the fact that it's on Twitter and Twitter people are a certain, they probably have a slanted, uh, they're a slanted demographic. I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> okay, okay. But all right, anyway, so- <laughs> anyway, at Foreman News. If you wanna if vote. You wanna, if you wanna vote, let's. Okay plump that up here. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. All right. So let's talk about um, closings. There's one very serious closing and one less serious but important closing. Oh, yeah. Well, a uh, uh, nursing home, Gloucester, a uh, skilled nursing home, Gloucester Healthcare is going to be closing. It has 41 residents uh, earlier this month, and um, the uh, company Next Step Healthcare is saying that. They're a woman-based company. They're saying that their landlord is looking at the uh, performance of this. Uh, it's about 
I think it's less than half full. They have about 99 beds. Mm. It's less than half full. The pandemic took its toll on uh, a lot of nursing homes. And, um, you know, they're saying that their, lord, their landlord made a decision to close Gloucester Healthcare uh, based on a number of factors. Uh, the landlord is closing it, not- It's, the, it's, it's not itself. owned, it's a leased facility. The, a next step healthcare began leasing the facility in 2017. So they have a landlord. You know, how is your, how is your nursing home performing? So they had low, med, low uh, mass health reimbursement rates, uh, you know, inflation for food. How about staffing? Was, was staffing? staffing was a, a problem. Uh, they, I, I guess they were saying that, uh, that the, uh, they were saying that in October, 2021, the rates uh, for nursing homes, nursing homes could, nursing agencies, not the nursing homes, could bill skilled nursing facilities were increased by 15 to 35%. So would you go to work for a nursing home? Or would you go to work for a nursing agency? And that drives up the costs of getting staffing too, and decimates the ability to recruit staff. So that no. is the companies saying they can't recruit staff. They had a decreased um, uh, um, enrollment, if you will. Mm -hmm. So and that um, may be because a number of factors. They don't have enough staff to um, take care of all the patients, all the clients. I think a lot of nursing. I think people pull people out of nursing homes. It's just you know, COVID just decimated. So what's the places. impact on the city with Gloucester Healthcare closing? Well, there's one more, there's one more nursing home uh, in the seaport. I'm not going to give the name because I don't, I'm not really sure of it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another nursing home on Cape Ann. And so the upshot of the, of this is that a lot, a lot of residents may have to move off Cape Ann, mm. you know, and where would the, like, where other, the, it's a, there's about 57. Place? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it, they, either they could go to their, uh, facilities or they could go to other facilities in the area which is tough on beverly yeah it's there's not yeah yeah obviously gloucester gloucester is a very unique place it's it is a little bit isolated because of you know just just its location mm. and so um it, it's made it'll be a hardship especially for we we're in touch with one resident who's sun doesn't drive and they may have to go somewhere else off the island and that can be serious you know uh, so. so so there are 40, 41 residents who need to um be they need to find new facilities so yes. and is gloucester healthcare working with the families to do that oh yeah i mean this is not a, a light process so there was a public hearing i didn't listen to it but there was a public hearing they have, the department of public health holds a public hearing on this closure it's mm -hmm. not something that the state takes lightly mm -hmm. and uh so the the closure plan has already been shared with the residents and they work with them now one of the things that you have to remember is they can't start relocating people or giving them assistance until the closure plan is approved and i don't think that's going to be too long but they do have a minimum of 120 days to inform residents that they are closing so the closure plan will probably be approved in short order. And that's and then, approved by the Department of Public Health? That's office? correct. That's correct. Okay. Huh. Um, yeah, and then it's it's a hardship for the for the residents, but the plan is to close it by de December 30th. And there's time to yeah. find other placements, but um, maybe so, not for everybody on Cape Ann. What was the original number of beds? That, did 99. You 99 beds. And they're so yeah, less than half full. Hmm. And do we have any idea what will happen to this space? None. Okay. The owner has got an address in Plano, Texas. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. Hmm. And uh, it's Next Step Healthcare. That's who owns it? That's yeah, they're a Woburn-based company. And they have a number of uh, facilities. Um, I was reading through the closure plan. They're going to offer, I mean, they'll probably, some of the employees as employees too, could hmm. probably move to other facilities. I mean, they, they have to assist the residents uh, once the closure plan is approved and finding a new place. And I think that probably will happen, but it'll be hard when it's just the geographic reality of Gloucester is that it will be difficult.
for, right. the, for relatives to visit their loved ones. Right. And I just wonder if, you know, the, that basically 50% occupancy does not reflect the fact that we don't need those beds. It might reflect the fact that they can't fill beds because of staffing, um, you know, low staffing. We just don't know, right? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, a lot of restaurants have a lot more capacity than they can get staff. Right, right. So, um, And they have to have staff for the bed. Yeah, exactly. And open the bed without the staff. So what I'm trying to say is it might, we might really need that facility. You know, it's, um, it might be really important to have it on Cape Ann. I, I'm not, I'm not disputing. It's, uh, it's, yeah. it's probably vital to, to the community you, you want, if you have a loved one, because it's, again, especially the reality of Gloucester, it's hard to get to from, you know, uh, you know, and then the closest place is Beverly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're looking at a, you know, you know, 20 minute, 30 minute. Beverly's hard to get around. It is. So. Beverly's big. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, that is sad news. And maybe we can talk to the Department of Public Health and get some more information. We, off, we often talk to them. So um, so let's move on, though. There's another closing that isn't quite as um, as hard. Well, you know, I think this is uh, this closing marks the start Re, you know, really of the uh, of Sawyer Free 2025, yeah, right? right? Yeah. The um, this the 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 project to to uh, build a new library, 28 29 million dollar facility, estimated uh, an addition on the back towards School Street, a new community room, teen room, uh, children's room. It's going to be light and airy. I mean, this uh, this is a great project, and for Gloucester, people have to remember. City, it's not a city, it's a city library, it's not owned by the city. A separate corporation owns that library. City staffs it, a separate corporation is taking this on. Mm. So um, this Friday they close, and I think they're expected to open on October 24. And that's right down the street, kind of. Yeah, like, it's, okay. uh, you know, listen, this is great. You can go to the Mystery Train uh, Records, yeah. pick up some vinyl, and then <laughs> you go get your books, you know. Who, who so, knows, you know. But, but it's, it's right the, on Main Street. It's the uh, it's the same building that has uh, St. Peter's Club as well. Okay. So what's the address? Do we know? Oh, you're going to put me on the spot oh, there. Oh, sorry about that. We'll, we'll I think it's 20, 21 Main Street. Okay. And if I'm wrong, I'll hear from, I will hear from, uh, from the powers that We'll people. get it right before we put it up. <laughs> so, it's, um, I think, it, yeah, 21 Main Street. Okay. So, but how does this work? They can't possibly be moving every book to that sm much smaller space. No, it, it, what, what's going to work is they'll have a smaller collection. It's 3,600 square foot space. I think, I believe the space that they're, the Monell built, the, it's not the Monell building, but the building designed by architect Don Monell mm -hmm. is about 15,000 square feet. Don't ask me. Because <laughs> like they're going to add another 15,000 square feet on the back. So okay, that's, right. it's a doubling size. Okay. So now you got to remember the library also has the Saunders house historic house right. there's a separate project going on separate to the construction to renovate that that will remain as library staff offices and storage okay but they will also have to put probably put uh, a lot of their collection in uh in storage as well but they're gonna have you know they probably have stacks books and you okay. know they're gonna, they're gonna offer programs so they're gonna use the community spaces they have a lot of programming at the library, mm -hmm. so they're going to try to offer some of that programming in the schools and parks and different places. So just to keep up the uh, keep up the library, and I've seen libraries move. I, I remember Middleton moved its library. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe over two decades now, but they they have a beautiful library, and they moved to a they moved to a warehouse behind a boat dealership on Route One Fourteen. While they were and renovating, would, or yeah, built. and you would go yeah. in, and it was a great space. They had the children's room and this. The space yeah. will have its children's space as well. Yeah. And they did a really great job mm -hmm. of setting it up. You felt like you were in a library. And I, I have every expectation that this new space will feel like a library and they'll do a great job. And it's not that far away from the from Dale Avenue. Yeah. And I assume that if they'll, you know, if they don't have the book, you they you can if you can't find it on the shelves, you tell your librarian and they, you know, have it for you the next day, some that sort of thing. Well, you can order a books through the Nobel system. Right, right, exactly. So you order, the, you just order the, uh, you just go and you order it, uh, and then it's delivered from another library. So whether they take it out of storage if they have in their collection, but if you look, if you can find it 
in another library in the region, it'll come to your door. Right. And uh, they're, uh, they're if you have a book due for when the library is closed, they're suspending that. Um, they're giving you a grace period. And the book drops will still be there. So if you want to drop off materials, CDs, books, audiobooks. Oh, the book drops are on Dale Avenue? There's, no? I believe there's one on, in, in, in the library and in the parking lot. Okay. okay. So they're going to make, so those will still be available. Okay. Um, until the, the new library opens. So if you get that book and it's like due, maybe you can take a few more weeks. <laughs> I'm terrible about over. Yeah, I know. I, yeah. <laughs> Um, all right. Anything else we need to know about the library is moving down the street to, we think, 21 Main Street. And, uh, and what <laughs> this is there's so much for my, uh, yes, my accuracy skills. Uh, no, um, uh, go, on the, go on their website and also check out the sawyerfree2025.org uh, yeah. uh, to check out the building, the, the plans of the building. And they need to raise some funds. The so city council is scheduled to go for a loan order in October and she's going to take on the debt sort of be the fiscal agent of this project do the short-term borrowing and then as money comes in you know they'll the the library people will pay it off but I'm just putting in a plug support the library I mean where else do you get this really cool amenity yeah. and, it, and it's supported by a corporation not the city mm -hmm. so you know these the people who are doing yeoman's work to give Gloucester a brand new state-of-the-art library Right. No, it's pretty great. Um, all right. Now, this is a subject that we just can't help talking about, and the whole city can't help talking about. It's the crossing safety at um, on Washington Street. So there are updates, right? Yeah, the um, uh, State Senator Bruce Tarr and uh, Ann Margaret Ferrante uh, came before the city council on Tuesday night to talk about all the stuff that they're doing. And I must say, it, um, at the end of that, discussion. Uh, City Council President Val Gilman noted something that they got a letter from the T's general manager, Steve Poftak. You know, the T has been a lot on, on his plate lately, you know, getting the orange line back. Mm -hmm. So they're well aware. So the, he outlined a number of things that they're trying to do, which is similar to what uh, Bruce Tarr talked about. I think Bruce Tarr now could probably be a train engineer. <laughs> or a signal maintainer, but all it's it's very technical about the stuff they're doing, replacing these this cabling, uh, timing the gates. I think basically the upshot is the T is well aware of this, and they are trying to take steps to make sure that the gates don't go up and down. But there's still uh, people are still reporting incidents. I think they had a meeting last week and the week before they had three. So there are three incidents. Um, three incidents, yeah. Yeah, so that, you know, the, the incidents involve either the, the train stops heading inbound, and then when it stops, the gates might go up again to let the traffic flow. And then when the tra train starts moving, it goes down again, and the train, the cars get trapped between the gate and the train mm -hmm. or get hit. And the other incidents that they were trying to address are so called tail rings. The train stops at the station heading to Rockport. When it releases its brakes, it rolls back a bit. Mm. And what happens? The gates come down. They, because they, they, it senses motion. There's motion and there's also timing on the gates as well. So it's a balance. The trains hadn't been, you know, let's put it this way. Trains hadn't been through Gloucester for two years. All right. We had, a, we rebuilt the $100 million. We rebuilt the Anasquam uh, Bridge. The MBTA did that. Ethan, I really hope you're not going to say that people are just not used to going through those crossings. No, but what I'm before. saying is, <laughs> okay, good. Well, I was at the gate one day, and I didn't see this any of these gates coming down. But as soon as the the the, the lights were still flashing, that you're not supposed to go. But the lights were still flashing, the gates started going up, and someone beeped at someone to go. And before the gates went up, the train went through, and the, before the gates went up, a bicyclist just takes their bike and and goes to the Washington Street crossing. So. There's a, there's a little bit of human nature in here, but okay. if the gate's going to go up, you're going to go, mm -hmm. and you're going to yeah. wind up. And, and if it comes down again, you're going to you're you're going to get, get your car's going to get hit. This right. is absolutely happening. Right. But like I said, it's been two years since trains have come through, and maybe there's just some adjustment to the system that needs to be done. 
So, well, and they're like, really taking this seriously. Yeah, and they are there making these adjustments. They're doing. They all were there today. So well, they, I'm going to say this on it's on Thursday. I saw them with some machine uh, doing something to the railheads. Uh, there was a vacuum truck that uh, uh, on the week of the cleanup by Council Worthley and Council O'Neill, the city cleanup that they did. That was great. Mm. There was a vacuum truck uh, vacuuming the dirt out of the ballast. I mean, it's. They replaced all the, you know, the cabling, the wiring. The, the, they're going to have the manufacturer of the signals out here. They put up those larger signs telling people how to call uh, that number for help uh, or if there's an incident or an emergency. Right. That's really important. That they're putting up cameras at the, at, the, uh, at the crossings. They're going to stripe every single crossing in the state. It's not just, not just the Gloucester crossings. They're going to stripe every single one with sort of, you know, stay back, stay out of this this area there is the motors does have to stay out of the area when the train is coming through you can't stop on the tracks right and that's a look i'm not blaming anybody it's just it's just a um it's so, just a happenstance he said i think i asked you this maybe the first time we had this conversation but i'm going to ask again have you heard of any other incidents in this state that uh, where it's this specific problem of the gates going up and then coming back down and sometimes coming down on top of a car I, no, I know I haven't I haven't heard it. Uh, I haven't heard uh, anything like that. But you know, we do, you know, you have to remember in uh, I think in January in Wilmington, uh signal maintainer didn't turn the system back on. A train came through and a woman was killed. And that's Senator Tarr's district. Yeah. So he's concerned. Um, so I don't I think this concern has reached the highest levels you can reach. I mean, if I see Char, I could, I wouldn't be surprised to see Charlie Baker out there someday, mm. looking at what's going on. It is serious. The he is taking it very seriously. You gotta, I wish we could see that letter from uh, Steve Paul. It's in the it's in the city council packet online. Read that letter from General Manager Steve Povtak. Okay. Well, can you just summarize it for us? I think basically did. It's all the things that they're doing. To okay, oh, okay. All right. Okay. But if you go on the city, go on the city council website, open up that packet and, and see that um, letter by general manager, Steve Poftak to the, uh, to Val Gilman, the city council president. And it really goes into very uh, good detail. They haven't finished yet. They're still working on this. Right. And it sounds like they haven't finished. They're still working on it because it might still be a problem because there was oh, yeah. Instances. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely a problem, but you, but it's like, there's something that they're trying to get their arms around. Yeah. All right. Well, um, Ethan, what are you working on next? So I was just at um, a new, uh, so it's called core, a peer recovery center that is uh, just went up 11 to 1115 Parker street. Um, it is a, it's, a peer recovery center. It's the 27th peer recovery center in Massachusetts. Just got, you know, just got funding. And it's in honor, in memory of Corey Bullard, who in 2017 lost his life to an overdose. He had trained to be a substance abuse counselor and then um, wound up using again and he lost his life. And his parents kept his dream alive. So this peer recovery center will employ. Uh, those in recovery or the, who've been through recovery to help mentor, uh, help those recovering. So um, it's a great, a great effort. Senator Tarr, Bruce Tarr was there. Uh, State Rep and Margaret Ferrante was there, both talking about their experiences. It was very personal, very emotional. The Bullards were there and it was, it's, it's an amazing thing. The closest, let me just put it on record. The closest center like this is in Malden, Lawrence or Lowell, wow. Wow. and Gloucester is uh, is is the leader in this country of police uh, referrals to treatment. So why not have a peer recovery center in the city? That's my soapbox, but I think it's a great effort. It's wonderful. So, and when can we read that story? Uh, I'm working on it uh, as we speak. Okay. So there we go. Okay. Thank you so much, Ethan. And um, again, Shana Tova. Shana Tova. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll talk to you next week. May your name be inscribed in the Book of Life. Interested in a sponsorship? Email sponsor at 1623studios.org to learn more.